What if we told you that one day your butt could save your life? Well, here to explain the science of breathing out your bum, yes, that's what I said, mm -hmm. gastroenterologist and founder of the Digestive Center for Wellness, Dr. Robin Chutkin. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Chutkin. It's my How are you? I'm very well, thanks. And I'm going to dignify that term with the official term, which is enteral ventilation. As you know, entero means digestive tract. So this is really, as you said, it's breathing through the bum. The digestive tract is, is actually really well equipped to do this because it's involved in exchange every day. I just happen to have this strainer next to me to demonstrate that when you eat food, it gets into your gut and then the gut extracts nutrients that get into the bloodstream and travel to the different cells in the body. And then of course the waste matter is excreted out of stool. Now the rectum, the lowest part of the digestive tract is really well equipped to do that because it has three different blood vessels supplying it. And so it absorbs things really well. And we put things in the rectum all the time to get absorbed. Suppositories, fever reducing medication, all kinds of medications go in there. So we have a long history in the digestive tract of it being an organ that can absorb things and can really do this exchange very well. So, you know, there was a study that sort of, you know, outlined and demonstrated the possibility of, of this concept. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this study so we understand kind of, you know, what we're learning about it? Absolutely. So I'm a gastroenterologist, which means I spend most of my time four feet deep in people's colons. And when I read this study, I literally a light bulb went off. I thought this is incredibly innovative. So what they did is scientists in Japan took animals, pigs and mice, deprived them of oxygen, and then squirted a fluid that was very rich in oxygen through the rectum. And the, the animals were able to absorb oxygen from the fluid, again, through this lattice work of blood vessels in the rectum with this rich blood supply. And not only were they able to absorb the oxygen, they were able to improve the condition that had resulted from low oxygen levels. So their color pinked up, the mice were able to walk normally, they were able to function normally. And best of all, the study showed that the gut bacteria, these trillions of organisms that live in our digestive tract that are really important for our health and well-being, that they weren't affected by the experiment. So an incredible, innovative idea is absorbing oxygen through the rectum instead of through the lungs. Well, such an interesting study, and yeah. you alluded to the fact we already know that, that medications, other things like a coffee enema, for example, these things are absorbed very well through the rectum. And, uh, you know, the digestive systems of the, of the laboratory animals you, you mentioned are not that dissimilar from ours. So mm -hmm. there's something there. I, I find it very yeah. intriguing. What does this, this study mean for, for the future of medicine? What does this mean for the future? Well, if you think about the current situation we're in with the pandemic, something you hear all the time is the lack of ICU beds. And when they talk about an ICU bed, we're not talking about the physical bed. We're talking about the access to ventilators as well as the personnel. And you've both spent time in intensive care units. You know these modern day ventilators aren't much bigger than a computer, but they still require essentially a full time person to monitor them, to program them, to change settings, etc. So when we talk about a lack of ICU beds, we're talking about a lack of access to ventilators and or personnel who can monitor these ventilators. We have a huge health shortage right now with respiratory technicians, nurses, and other qualified physicians and healthcare practitioners. So imagine if we could take a technology like this and we can use it and we can really expand it, the services, for people who are oxygen deprived. And that's not just people who have COVID in the ICU. Think about people who have asthma. Think about people with chronic lung disease, people who you see walking around carrying canisters of oxygen. Now, it's really important to keep in mind that this is a first study. It's an animal study. This has not been shown in humans yet. This is, this, the results haven't been duplicated. But again, as a gastroenterologist, I think it's an incredibly exciting innovation. It's a new way of thinking about things and applying a technology to a different part of the body. And it looks like it works. It, it sure is interesting, fascinating, and fingers crossed. Obviously, we need a lot more study in humans, but you never know. Yeah. Dr. Chutkin, thank you so much for taking us through the science behind such a fascinating study. My pleasure.